One of the intriguing things about spies is that you have to understand that this is a crime like no other. Uh, a bank robbery, for instance, has a narrative arc. It, it finishes at a certain point. But if you're engaged in espionage, you are committing a crime all the time. 24 hours a day, you are lying. You are pretending to be somebody other than you are. You're often lying to your spouse, as well as your working colleagues, uh, your extended family, not to mention the country in general. So the betrayal becomes baked into the DNA. As a result, I don't think there are any happy spy stories. I think almost all of these lives at one point or another become so conflicted between the, the stress of having to be someone else all the time and lying to everybody and who you must be inside. Um, there are many cases where spies have simply broken down and not really been able to carry on. And there are also, I suppose, those insouciant people who felt that they just got a kick out of it. They thought that lying was actually fun, that there was an amusement value. But I think mostly it's tragic, and it's certainly tragic for the families. I can't think of a single instance where the wife or children or any close family members of a spy was actually better off for their parent having been a spy. You know, there's this whole issue in espionage of honey traps, of setting um, sexual uh, temptation in the way of people. Uh, I'm always amazed that it works. I can't imagine that anybody who was traveling in what was then essentially a hostile environment, this would be, let's say, a West German who was visiting East Berlin for the weekend, and somehow this gorgeous woman, you know, wants nothing more in life than to spend the night with him. Doesn't he ever say, seriously, really? You know, or doesn't he suspect anything? So basically, I find it implausible. I've never used it myself in any fiction, and I know that it has happened in real life, but I'll bet it hasn't happened as often as you think. The whole subject of informing, and certainly informing on your own, on your neighbors, on your family, uh, is so complicated, and so it's just a barbed wire question. I don't know that anybody really has a short answer to this. Um, I, you know, after 1989, when the files were opened in Berlin, certainly, and, and here, one was shocked and dismayed to discover that people had been lying, that they had been reporting on you. What often people were landed in trouble, and for very trivial reasons. And the people who were informing had been either forced to do so or thought that they were going to buy their way into some privilege or some easement in their lives. Do we blame them? Sure. Do we blame them altogether? I don't think, uh, you know, guilt is a very funny thing to assign. I don't know who of us is really in a position to decide who's guilty and who's not guilty of about a, a crime so complicated. Say if I were writing such a character, it would not be a sympathetic character. I think informers um, almost invariably are going to be wicked people in novels. But in life, I think it's a little more complicated. One of the aspects of writing that I've always found very intriguing is why people feel the need for physical description of characters. Um, I think that actually the minute they start talking, their character is revealed. I believe that dialogue is action and dialogue is character and dialogue is the way you, that people reveal themselves. If you said to me somebody has brown eyes and floppy hair and a long nose, so what? It's really a question of what's he doing? What's he saying? I don't think anybody remembers plots really. I think what they remember are characters. And I think that what writing that purports to be any form of literature is about is an exploration of character. It's, uh, it should be that the novel is also an agent of a kind of moral inquiry. It should be asking questions like, how do we live? How should we live? What's the right thing to do? What's not the right thing to do? And put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Be empathetic. Live the character's life. I think that all books that we truly remember uh, are like that. We remember the people. I mean, I think the only great novel that I can remember the plot of in any detail is Moby Dick because it's so simple, but all for, the for the rest of them, it's 
you remember the characters.